Hi everyone, welcome to Crush House Legends. By the way, the first ever episode of Crush House Legends. I'm your very proud host, Wayne Allen Root. Now we've got a jam-packed show for you today. Former Major League Baseball relief pitcher and the legend also known as The Wild Thing. Welcome to the show, Mitch Williams. Thank you very much. So my first question is, where did you ever get that nickname, Wild Thing? How'd you get that brand? Well, in 1989, when the movie was released, I was with the Cubs at the time, and Calvin Schiraldi, another relief pitcher, and I went to see the movie. Needless to say, we walked out of the movie, and Schiraldi had hung that damn nickname on me. So it kind of took off in Chicago and followed me everywhere I went. And, and are you happy about that? I mean, that's the funny thing about life. Some, sometimes people get a nickname, and they love it, and it makes their career, and they make lots of money on it, but they hate it, and they wish it never happened for whatever reason. You like Wild Thing? Oh, I've been called way worse. So yeah, that doesn't it didn't bother me. It's not something that I perpetuated, but for some reason teams like to latch on to it and play it. It got the crowd into it. So it didn't bother me. Like I said, I'd been called a whole lot worse than that. And and obviously it fit. For those who don't remember, you were wild, right? In other words, maybe wild personality and wild baseball player, right? No, no. That was a, a complete misunderstanding with who I was as a, as a person. It definitely fit me on the field be, because I wasn't one of those guys who can go out and paint the corner, throw change up, that sort of thing. But in my uh, daily life, people would be astonished at how boring I am. <laughs> but you just let it rip. Your fastball was, what, like 98, 99 miles an hour, right? No, I never, not, never got there. On a ray gun, the best I ever did was uh, 97. But, wow. yeah, I look at the guns today and, and the difference in the science that they've done on them. There's a... The ray gun that we used when I was pitching and the striker gun that is used today, the difference is the ray gun got the balls across the plate. The striker gun gets it out of the hand. And I'm not the guy that said this or did the math on it or anything, but the scientists got involved. They claim that uh, baseball loses seven miles an hour in flight in that 60 feet, six inches. So it's a little different game. But, but Mitch, in your day, 97 miles per hour was about as fast as anybody was clocked, correct? Well, it, yeah, at the time, it was pretty quick at the time. But I, I look at it for what it is. I, I look around the game today, and I see they got eight guys on every staff that throw 95 or above, mm -hmm. and that just doesn't happen. I'm sorry, God didn't decide to start making more arm speed. So they had to uh, adjust the gun because they had done so much for the game offensively that they had to do something for the fans of pitching. So now when a guy hits a home run out of the park, they can say, oh, he hit a 99-mile-an-hour fastball. No, it wasn't 99, but... It gives them what they want, gives the fans what they want. But I think the game is suffering right now because of it. What's your favorite memory of your career when you look back? Uh, it would have to be uh, the game six against the Braves in the NLCS because I, I got, had a one, two, three inning, and I bet I didn't have three of them all year long. Wow. So the game six of the NLCS was my favorite memory. And, and obviously your worst memory would have to be the World Series walk-off home run by Carter, right? Well, that's not there at the top of my list as favorite things that ever happened to me, Wayne, but someone had to win. It was Joe that night. Uh, favorite stat, 192 saves. Is that what you're most proud of? No, I'm most proud of the fact that I hit 1,000 in 1993. I was uh, one for one in 93. If I'd have got another at bat, I might have hit 2,000. There you go. Never able to duplicate the 43 saves in 93. Why? Amazing year. Couldn't uh, duplicate it. Why? I'll be honest, Wayne. When I left Philly, and mentally I was kind of done because I had just gone out and had the best year of my career, gone to a World Series, lost the World Series, and then got traded. I really never wanted to leave Philly. So uh, I had just had the best year of my career, and they traded me. So it kind of mentally drained me a little bit, and I just never got back to where I was. What's up with the no-hitters? Every time I turn on the TV or the sports news, it's another baseball no-hitter. Well, Wayne, if you take out your phone and look up all the dopes that are preaching this launch angle, that's what's wrong with the game today. They're teaching hitting the absolute wrong way to teach it, and that's why the strikeouts are up and the no-hitters are up. Any picks for uh, 2021 as far as the baseball season? Who's the best of the best? Who do you think has the best shot to make this World Series? Uh, I'll be, if I had to put a, uh, a name to it, uh, the World Series is going to be, and I hate to say this, because it, it falls right into the lap of what Major League Baseball wants. They don't want any small market teams in. 
in the postseason. And the way it looks, I, I honestly, I can sit here today and say that I can see a Yankees-Dodgers World Series. Anybody overrated in your mind? Uh, I think if you go down the line and you look at some of these teams and what they're capable of doing and what they're not capable of doing, I go right to the Anaheim Angels, and I just don't understand why that team cannot win. They've got two of the most exciting players in the game. One of them's hurt right now in Trout. But Otani, this guy is a freak of nature. And anyone that is a fan of baseball, this is how the game was meant to be played. If you pitch, you get in there. You, you have to hit. That's how I believe the game should be played. The nine guys on the field should be hitting. And the fact that there's a pitcher lighting up the American League just thrills me beyond belief. But they are not going to do anything. That's the sad part. If you were sitting in front of a, a, a group of, uh, of players right now who are young, just got into the big leagues, what advice would you give them from your career? What would you change? What would you tell them they should do maybe a little different than you did or follow in your footsteps? Uh, I think the, the biggest thing I would give, or as far as advice goes to young players, the way the game is structured today, the money that is being handed out, if you do what, you're, what you absolutely should do with your money, when you get done playing baseball, you should never have to work another day in your life. Find a really good financial advisor. And it's, it's sad to say because you're not talking about the game, but I am talking about the game. It's the game within the game. A lot of kids, when they come to the big league, I know for me, I was raised, I, we were poor. That's all there was to it. So my rookie year, I made $60,000 a year. I'm like, whoa, I thought wow. I was a gazillionaire. So that would be the thing, but I spent it. And that's the thing I would preach to young kids. Please get a financial advisor and have them teach you what you need to know. I'm just dying to ask this question. I don't know if you're going to answer it or not. But what I'll was answer the, anything. What was the most money you ever made in the 1990s? Because I know they didn't pay them like they pay them today. What was your highest salary? Three point five million. Oh, so you did make big money. Okay. Well, I was. It was actually funny. I was a free agent in '91, and I signed my deal with the Phillies, a three-year deal, and made me the highest-paid reliever in history for wow. two weeks until Eckersley signed. So I huh. didn't hold the the mantle long, but it was nice to be spoken of in those with those guys that that are outstanding closers. No, that's very cool, and that's a lot of money even by today's standards. So, Oh, yeah, I was overpaid. I was pretty sure of it. <laughs> Last question. Who do you think or who do you like the most? Who's the best player in baseball that you love to watch? Uh, I love Trout, obviously. But the, the kid in Washington, Soto, that kid, is he's a real deal. He's struggling a little bit now, but that, can, that swing and just the way he approaches every at-bat, that's a guy I love to watch. All right, Mitch, great to have you on. Another baseball legend right here on uh, the Crush House Network. Uh, congratulations on a great career, and thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Wayne, for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by for another episode of Crush House Legends here on the Crush House Network. Don't forget to drop by to VegasWinners.com and stay locked in with me and the rest of our Crush House gang and get all our expert picks for free. You don't want to miss it. Thank you again to the wild thing himself, Mitch Williams. Come back next week and every week for more right here on the Crush House Network. Thank you. Until next time, win big, baby.